Okay, it's time for photoelectron spectroscopy part two. We already looked at the experimental setup where photons strike a sample uh, of atoms and eject electrons. Those electrons are analyzed and then a computer generates a graph or a spectrum for us and that spectrum, that graph, is going to be the subject of today's video. Well, uh, today you should be able to do two things by the time this video is over. You should be able to relate a PES, a photoelectron spectroscopy graph or spectrum, to our models of electron structure. Those models would be those Bohr diagrams or the electron configurations. The second thing you should be able to do, to do is to analyze uh, a spectrum to determine the identity of an unknown element. All right, well, let's take a look at uh, a spectrum here. So here's a look at the graph at the top of the screen. This is a graph of what a computer might draw for us based on the energy of those electrons that got ejected. Now, before I talk about the graph at the top, I wanna look at the Bohr diagram one more time. This is for neon, okay? Now, uh, neon has, let's see, we're gonna go with green. This electron, I'm gonna pick on this electron right here in the first energy level. All electrons are attracted to the nucleus. That attraction is called binding energy. The nucleus is positive, the electron is negative, and so there is a force of attraction that uh, the, the nucleus attracts that electron because opposites attract. The magnitude of that attraction, let's just call it a plus 10. So we can say that that energy is like bound or attracted to the nucleus. We call that binding energy. All the electrons in the atom are attracted to the nucleus. Um, I'm gonna pick on one more here, this one right here, from the second energy level. Now, this one is attracted to the nucleus, of course, as well, but the force of attraction is only a plus eight, not a plus 10. This electron that I circled in yellow, it only feels like eight protons are pulling on it instead of 10. Why is that? Well, notice here that uh, the, s the first energy level is kind of in the way. And the first energy level has two electrons. Each electron is negative. So there are, a, it's a total of a negative two charge in the first energy level. What that does, that first energy level weakens the force of attraction by two. And so this electron only feels like eight protons are pulling on it. So the binding energy of the one I circled in yellow is gonna be less than the binding energy that I, of, of the electron that I circled in green. And so if a, a photon comes along, here's my UV light, it comes along and it's gonna knock that electron out of there. It would take less energy to do that. That energy is called ionization energy, okay? The ionization energy will remove that electron. It'll break the binding energy. So the binding energy and the ionization energy are really uh, the same thing. Ionization energy, as you know, is the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. And it's the exact same as the binding energy. However much the electron is bound to the nucleus, that's the same amount of energy that's required to rip that electron away. Similarly, um, another photon might come along, and here it comes, and it might knock this electron out of the atom. The green binding energy, the energy I, or the, the photon I drew in green, uh, is gonna be greater, have greater energy than the yellow, okay? The binding energy is greater for the green one in the first energy level than it is for the yellow in the second energy level. Let's look at the graph now. First of all, the uh, x-axis is the binding energy, okay? We've got binding energy here, and these peaks give us the relative number of electrons, okay? So uh, a shorter peak represents fewer electrons than a taller peak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just color the short peaks green. 
and I'll color the um, the taller peak yellow. We can see that the yellow peak is roughly three times the height of the green one. If you look at this green one, you'd have to stack about three of them on top of each other to get the height of that yellow peak. What that tells us is that the number of electrons in the yellow peak is about three times greater than the number of electrons in the green peaks. And so if there are, let's say, six electrons, right, if there's six electrons in that yellow peak, that would mean that uh, the green peak has to have only two electrons. Right? Each green peak would have to have just two electrons, right? And further, we can say that this is the 1s, this is the 2s, and the yellow is the 2p. There are six electrons in the 2p, there are two electrons in the 2s, and two electrons in the 1s. The graphs, the heights of the uh, peaks, correlate to our model. Furthermore, it looks like there are two electrons, okay, right here. These electrons have a binding energy just under 800 EV, 800 electron volts. Contrast that with these electrons right here. Uh, this has these have binding energies of around 50 or 25, much, much less. So from this graph, we see there are a total of two plus six, eight electrons that have less binding energy. Look at that, eight electrons down here in the board diagram, eight of them that have a plus eight, a weaker binding energy. And there are two electrons that would have a higher binding energy, and look at what we see. Furthermore, in the second energy level, these eight electrons, our model says, hey, some of them are S electrons and others are P electrons. Well, look at this. There are two different peaks. Those two different peaks, we would say, correlate to two different sublevels. So there's a correlation. This graph here correlates with what we already know about electrons, their electron configurations, and it also correlates with our Bohr diagrams. Well, let's look at one more. And uh, we're going to look at uh, this electron spectrum, photoelectron spectrum. I'm not going to give you the name of the element that this is for, but I want you to pause the video, analyze the spectrum, and see if you can determine the name of the element. So go ahead, pause the video now. Okay, I assume that you paused the video, and we're going to look at this. I'm going to color some of these so that I can talk about them a little easier. Uh, we've got these green ones are a little bit short. And uh, the tall one, I'll color yellow one more time. Now, again, the yellow ones are triple the height and uh, of, the, of the green ones. And so we could say that, wow, this must be the uh, 1s. And that height, we'll call, we'll say that that stands for two electrons. And then comes 2s, we'll say that stands for two electrons. And the uh, taller one has three times as many electrons, so we'll just say that that's six of them. We call that 2p. And then the next one, uh, there's a 3s. And then notice this last little peak here. The last little peak is a, uh, there's a, it's half as tall as the green, and so we'd say there's only one electron there. And that's what we call 3p. There's only one of them. It can, it, it can get as high as the other one, but that's it. And now notice there are uh, big gaps, okay? Big gaps in the, uh, you know, between the first energy level and the second energy level. And between the second and the third are relatively larger gaps than between any of the sublevels. So uh, how do we determine what uh, atom this is? Just add up the electrons. Two plus two plus six plus two plus one. Add those up, we get 13. And lucky number 13 on the periodic table is aluminum. So if I've done my job well, then you should be able to do two things. You should be able to relate uh, a PES graph or spectrum to our models of electron structure and 
you should be able to analyze a spectrum and determine the identity of an unknown element.